Welcome to today's discussion on quadric surfaces. I'm Jake Avila. After this video, we will be able to sketch the graph of an ellipsoid. Are you ready? Do you have your pencil and a clean sheet of paper with you? If yes, let's begin. For this problem, we need to identify and sketch the graph of x squared over 4 plus the quantity y minus 3 squared over 9 plus z squared over 16 equals 1. First, we observe that when we look at the individual degrees of the variables present, all of them are of degree 2. For instance, the first term x squared over 4 is degree 2, the second term when expanded is also degree 2, and the last term z squared over 16 is also degree 2. Moreover, when we move all terms with the variable in it on one side of the equation, all of them have the same sign. In this case, all of them are positive. Combining these two observations and from the classification of quadric surfaces given in the lecture, our surface is an ellipsoid. Also, note that this ellipsoid is translated three units from the origin towards the positive y-axis due to the presence of the quantity y minus 3 squared. Now, we are left to sketch the graph of the surface. We do this by finding sufficient traces that will aid us in sketching. From the equation of the ellipsoid, we may easily identify these planes that we need to consider. All we have to do is to find an appropriate choice of value so that the term corresponding to the variable disappears. For instance, for the term x squared over 4 to be 0, we need to set x equals 0. So this gives us the plane x equal to 0 or the yz plane. Next, for the quantity y minus 3 squared over 9 to be 0, we need to set y equals 3. So this corresponds to the plane y equals 3. Lastly, for the term z squared over 16 to be 0, we need to set z equals 0. So this gives us the plane z equal to 0 or the xy plane. Hence, we need to find the traces on the yz plane, the plane y equals 3, and the xy plane. Furthermore, since we are graphing an, uh, an ellipsoid, we expect the traces to be ellipses. So we start with the trace on the xy plane. So for this one, we set z equals 0. So uh, from the equation of the ellipsoid, the third term on the left-hand side vanishes so that we obtain or we are left with x squared over 4 plus the quantity y minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. So this trace is an ellipse with center at the point x, y, z where x equal to 0, y equals 3, and by assumption, z equals 0. So for the center, we look at the numerators. Now, uh, this gives us the center uh, with coordinates 0, 3, 0. So from the equation, to get the vertices, instead of looking at the, uh, the numerators, we now look at the denominators. Since 9 is greater than 4, the vertices correspond to a shift on the y variable. So from the center, 0, 3, 0, we add and subtract the square root of 9 on the y component. So we have 0, 3 plus square root of 9, 0. So we have 3 plus 3 or the point 0, 6, 0. For the other point, we have 0, 3 minus square root of 9, 0. So 3 minus 3 or 0, 0, 0, which is the origin. Finally, to get the endpoints of, of the minor axis, we do the same process for the x variable. So we also add and subtract the square root of 4 on the x component. So we have 0 plus or minus square root of 4, 3, 0. So we get the points plus minus 2, 3, 0. So now we uh, plot these four points on the 3D space. 
So first, we draw the coordinate axis in the usual way where the z-axis points upwards, the x-axis points towards you, and the y-axis points to the right. So here's the plot of the point 0, 0, 0. Next, for the point 0, 6, 0, from the origin, we do not move on the x direction since the x component of the point is 0. For the y component, we move 6 units towards the positive y direction. And since z equals 0 all throughout, we do not move on the z direction. So here's the plot of the point 0, 6, 0. Next, for the point 2, 3, 0, from the origin, we move 2 units in the positive x direction and then move 3 units towards the positive y direction. Lastly, for the point negative 2, 3, 0, from the origin, we move 2 units in the negative x direction and then move 3 units towards the positive y direction. So from here, we are now ready to sketch the ellipse. Now, we stroke a thin line following the movement of the animation to indicate the graph of the ellipse. So this concludes the trace on the xy plane. We now move on to the second trace. So for this trace, uh, on the yz plane, we set x equals 0. So that from the equation of the ellipsoid, the first term, x squared over 4, disappears. So we are left with the quantity y minus 3 squared over 9 plus z squared over 16 equals 1. Again, this is an ellipse with center at the point 0, 3, 0. Now, looking at the denominators, since 16 is greater than 9, the vertices correspond to a shift on the z variable. Similarly, we obtain 0, 3, 0 plus or minus square root of 16, so we get the points 0, 3, plus minus 4. For the remaining points, we have 0, 3, plus or minus square root of 9, 0, and so we get the points 0, 6, 0, and the origin. Next, we plot these points. But here, I skip the part where we plot the points individually. If you have any difficulty in situating points in the 3D space, you may visit or review the previous lectures. So in this sketch, we plot the four points along with the first ellipse that we traced before. Here, I have omitted some of the points in the previous sketch to emphasize the trace that we want. But on your sketch, keep it as is. Again, following the motion of the animation, we stroke a thin line to get the second ellipse. So far, we have obtained the traces on the x, y, and the y, z planes. All is left to do is to find the trace on the plane y equals 3. So for this trace, we set y equals 3. So from the equation of the ellipsoid, the second term uh, become 0 so that we get x squared over 4 plus z squared over 16 equals 1. Looking at the denominators, since 16 is greater than 4, the vertices correspond to a shift on the z variable. So we, have, uh, we get 0, 3, 0 plus minus square root of 16 or the points 0, 3 plus minus 4. So for the remaining points, we have 0 plus minus square root of 4, 3, 0, or the points plus minus 2, 3, 0. So plotting these points in the 3D space, we have the following. Here, the previous two ellipses are already drawn. So to get the last ellipse, we follow the animation and stroke a thin line passing through the four points. Finally, if we label all the points, we now put our attention to the traces uh, that are inside and are covered by the surface. So for these portions of the ellipses, we replace the solid line with the broken line to indicate depth. 
So to get clean sketches, always start with thin lines. And after getting all the necessary traces and labeling all your points, finalize the solid and the broken lines. So here is the ellipsoid when graphed in the 3D space. For our purposes, the sketch of the traces obtained in the previous uh, slide is already enough. So here we provide an animation to easily visualize the surface. So this ends our solution for exercise 1. In the next discussion, we will learn how to sketch the graph of an elliptic paraboloid.